Hello, everybody. This is the last uh, lecture segment for Chapter 6. One last idea here to cover. So I want to start off with this analogy. Um, I'm a big cereal fan. My family eats a lot of cereal. Uh, I've had occasions where I was recuperating from a medical situation. Almost all I ate was cereal. And I always ran into this problem. So here I've got a box of cereal, 510 grams. It says 64 grams per serving. That's what I did. I poured it into a bowl and weighed it. And I came up with 64 grams per serving. The milk, same thing, I measured it out. And it turns out it's 0 0.20 liters per serving was what I was getting. So here's what I want to know. I've got 500 grams roughly of cereal and I've got 3.8 liters of milk. How many servings should I get? Well, I actually have to do two calculations. I have to figure out the cereal, 510 grams times one serving per 64 grams, and that gives me eight servings of cereal. Now, if I do the same thing for the milk, 3.8 liters, one serving, 0 0.20 liters, I get 19 servings. And if you eat a lot of cereal, you know this. Like, well, yeah, I never, ever mix. It never works out that, like, I just finished the cereal and just finished the milk at the same time. So the question is, well, what has limited my number of servings? And we're going to have a fancy word for that. We're going to call this the limiting reactant. Sometimes we call it the limiting reagent. Now, yeah, don't worry about it. Well, cereal I ran out after eight servings. Milk, I could have got 19 servings if I would have had enough cereal. So cereal is what I ran out of. And so the question is, well, after that many servings, how much cereal remained? None. I used it all up. That's what limited my number of servings. So then the other thing is, okay, well, if you used up all the cereal, what was left over? Milk. We sometimes call this the excess, excess reactant, excess, excess reactant. Okay, well, let's summarize that now. The limiting reactant here was cereal. And what it really did was it, it limited the production. So limits products or limits, you know, let's say limits product amount. I could only get eight servings. No matter what I did, I got eight servings and that was it. And it was because I had run out of the cereal. What happens to a limiting reactant? How much is left after it's complete? None. That's the whole point. The limiting reactant runs out and everything just stops. Now here's something to think about then. What if I had more cereal? What if I got a couple hundred grams more of cereal or another box of cereal? Oh, if I had that, I could actually get more product. So there's my limiting reactant. You run out, it limits your, your amount of stuff you can produce. If I can get more, I can make more product. The excess reactant here was milk. Was there any left over? Yes. That's the whole point. It was excess. There was stuff left over at the end. If I had more milk, how many more servings would I have produced or been able to have? None. There's no effect. I'm trying to get that to stop. Stay there. No effect. You can add all you want of the excess. It was excess already. Adding more doesn't do anything. That's one of the last two concepts is this idea of limiting reactant. The last idea is, what if things go wrong? And guess what? They always go wrong. Anytime you're in a lab, nothing ever, ever works out perfectly. But on the previous page, we calculated 8.0 servings. Now, we didn't sit down and eat zero. We just did the calculation and came up with eight servings. So we call that our theoretical yield. Now, you're sitting in front of the couch, maybe not being perfectly careful, Cereal milk, cereal milk, cereal milk. Actually, you know what? I want to zoom that in now that I realize that a little bit. So 
Sorry, I just realized I could hit the pause button. I'm getting more professional every day. I think I have about 27 million hits on YouTube right now. Okay, so you're sitting on the couch watching reruns of My Name is Earl. A pretty funny show, by the way. Uh, and you're pouring milk and cereal, milk and cereal, and you get five bowls, six bowls. You start to pour a seventh bowl, and you only get half a bowl. You go, wait a minute. I only got 6.5 servings out of this thing. I expected eight, but I only got 6.5. Well, so did you get 100%? No. And you never, ever do. It never works out perfectly like that. For some reasons we'll see in some other chapters. So how are we going to express that? How are we going to say, well, I didn't get eight. I only got six and a half. Well, we're going to do it like this. We're going to put the 6.5 on top, the 8.0 on the bottom, and convert it to a percentage. When I do that, I get 81%. So what we would say is, well, I had the milk and cereal. I expected eight bowl, eight servings, but I only got 81% of what I expected. Now, we can formally, we say it like this. We're looking at the products. And I'm going to say, well, what did I actually get? Actual, or sometimes we say experimental. That's a fancy word for sitting on the couch, watching my reruns of My Name is Earl. When I went into a lab, or I sat on the couch, that's what I actually got. Well, I only got six and a half. And we divide that by what we would have predicted or calculated. Predicted, calculated amount. Now, the amount means it could be grams, could be moles, could be liters, could be anything I want. It just doesn't matter what it is. I have an amount that I actually got and an amount that I expected from calculations. There are the two ideas for the rest of this chapter. If you stop the video, you can probably do everything you need to do now. Um, the idea is limiting reactant. What thing gives me the least amount of stuff? And then this percent yield. Okay, I actually did the experiment, and what did I actually get? But I have three examples. This is an industrial example. Jess Vickery, my good friend and outstanding teacher, he said, you know, you shouldn't do that. But he feels he thinks, uh, well, maybe you should use smaller quantities. Okay, I'm doing an industrial. 25 kilograms, 25,000 grams of nitrogen reacts with 5,000 grams of hydrogen. And you might want to stop the video if you're still struggling with that kilo business and think, how did he say 25,000? How did he say 5,000? Reacts to produce uh, ammonia, NH3. And I got 4.97 kilograms of ammonia, 4,970 grams. To make our lives easier, I've given you molar masses right there. And the first thing says, well, what's the limiting reactant? Well, here's what I have to do. I have to check the nitrogen and the hydrogen. The same way I had to check the cereal and the milk. So I'm going to do a little calculation, nitrogen. I'm going to start off with 25,000 grams of nitrogen. And I want to know grams of NH3. I'm going to do the same thing here, 5,000 grams of hydrogen grams NH3. Whichever one's less is my limiting reactant. So let's try this dimensional analysis thing, something, something new here. Now there's multiple ways to do this as always, but right away my hint is, well, grams of N2 I'd like to get rid of. Well, the only real ratio I have to that is moles of N2. So those grams would cancel. And I said, well, I'm trying to get to NH3. I got to cancel the moles of N2. Do I have a ratio of moles of NH3 to moles of N2? I sure do. Right here. Those equations we balanced in chapter, did we do that in five? We did it in chapter five. That's, remember, my mole recipe. So, oh, wait a minute. Moles. NH3, there's that, so grams of N2 have canceled, moles of N2 have canceled. Oh, I got to get rid of moles 
NH3. And the only thing I have a ratio is grams NH3. So I'm going to plug in those numbers. Let's see, one mole. I've got it up there at the top of the page, 28.01. The ratio here is I get two moles of NH3 for every one mole from the chemical reaction equation. And here I've got 17.03 roughly to 1. And don't sweat it if the last digit, 28.02 or 3 or 0 or 17.04 or 17. That doesn't make any difference. That's just depending on which periodic table you use. Now when I do that calculation, I get 30,400 grams of ammonia. I want to do the same thing for hydrogen. You might stop the video and see if you can do this. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly. Grams H2, moles H2. Moles H2, moles NH3. Mole NH3, grams NH3. Now all I have to do, I know those ratios will get me through. So I go well, for every gram, 2.016, two moles of NH3 for every three moles of H2, 17.01 for every one. And when I do that, I get 28,200 grams. So what's my production limit? 28,200 grams. What limited that? What limited me to the 28,000? The hydrogen. If I had nit nitrogen, I could make more. Remember, it's like if I had milk, I could get 19 servings. If I had cereal, I could only get 8 servings. Oh, there's my limit. So what's limiting is my H2. Well, the other one must be the stuff that's left over. N2. All right. Stop the video. Look through that. That makes sense. Go back and look at the other page. Uh, let's do a couple examples. Now, well, let's finish this one up, actually. Now, it says, hey, when you actually run the process, 4.9... Four point nine seven kilograms of NH three is what I actually get. Well, what was my production limit in kilograms? Well, from the previous page, what did we say? Uh, twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight thousand two hundred grams was our theoretical calculation. Now this should be just like a no brainer. If you're getting this wrong, dead patients. So I go, oh, that's right. One kilogram means a thousand grams. So I get 28.2 in kilograms. That's just a simple conversion. Well, percent yield, what I actually produced. 4.97 kilograms. I expected, calculated, predicted, predicted 28.2 kilograms. That's what I get the experiment. That's what I expected. It gives me a 17.6% yield. It sounds kind of low, but actually that's typical. Ammonia is tricky to produce. There are a lot of industrial reactions where your yield might only be 10 or 20 or 30%. So we make up for it with some tricks we'll see in chapter nine. And make up for it sometimes by just pumping lots and lots and lots of the limiting reactant. All right, last two pages. 6.17. Same thing. I have got 19.4 grams of that stuff. I've got 50.0 grams of HCl 
and I want to know what my theoretical yield is. This is just on paper. We're just going to do the calculations and see what we get. So same the way we had to do the cereal and the milk, we're going to do this uh, uh, ethylene and hydrogen chloride. I just have to do both of those. You might stop the video, see if you can do those calculations. I'm going to go 19.4 grams C2H4. I'm cheating there a little bit. You might stop and think, well, wait, how did he do that? Gram C2H2 mole C2H2 mole C2H5Cl. Again, you might want to stop the video and say, wait, how did he, how did he do that? Per mole c 2 h Four. Let me correct that. Sorry, I should. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to go grams C2H5Cl per mole C2H5Cl. Plug in the numbers. I've given to you up there. So you don't have to waste a bunch of time doing this. 28.0. Nice balanced chemical equation. All I had to do is one to one. Got that up there. 64.5 for one mole. And I get, check my math, 44.7 grams C2H5Co. It's purely theoretical. That might be cereal, that might be my milk. I'm going to do this one. 50 grams H2. And again, I encourage you to stop the video and go, oh yeah, what pieces would I put in there? Grams H2. Mole of H2. Mole C2H5Cl. Mole H2. And again, this isn't the only way to do it. You can do this five, six different ways, but, and I go here, mole C2H5Cl, grams C2H5Cl. Plug in the numbers. H2, nice work. How about HCl? HCl. HCl, HCl, HCl. Now, if I plug in numbers, I'll do this in blue. Uh, Thirty-six point five. To one to one. One mole. Sixty-four point. When I do that, when I do that, I get 88.4 grams C2H5Cl. I'm in my cereal, cereal and milk again. Do I pick the 8 or do I pick the 19? I have to pick the 8. So that C2H4, the ethylene, would limit my production. And I would say a theoretical yield, 44.7 grams C2H5Cl. This is an excess. This is a limiting reactant. Now it says, hey, you only got 25.5. So I'm going to do the actual 25.5 grams. That's what I actually got. That's when I went into a lab or somewhere and did the experiment. I expected 44.7 grams. There's my ratio. And we just convert it to a percent by multiplying by 100%. I get 57.0% is my yield. That's my percent yield from this experiment. Okay. Last page. Now this is a little backwards, but 
all the relationships are the same. It says I'm reacting ethylene oxide with water to give me this ethylene glycol. Now here it says your yield is 96%. That's pretty good. That says you're going to use 35 grams of ethylene oxide. So 35.0 grams of that stuff. And it says excess water, meaning that's the not the limiting reactant. That's the excess reactant. It doesn't matter how much you've got. You've got more than enough. So 96% yield. So I'm going to think, okay, wait a minute now. It says how many, how many grams are actually formed? So I might think, okay, I want it, I've got to figure actual grams divided by calculated grams. I actually got 35 grams. Well, I need to calculate what I expected, multiply that by 100%, and now they've given us 96.0%. So all I have to do is find the calculated amount. So I'm going to find the calculated amount by our regular stoichiometry calculation. I've got those numbers, and then I'll go back and say, oh, that's what I expected, and I can figure what I actually got by using that percent yield calculation or formula. So I'm going to go 35.0 grams C2H4O. And I'm trying to get to, let's see, grams c 2 H6O2. That's what I'm trying to get to. So gram C2H4O mole C2H4O moles C2H4O mole C2H6O2 mole C2H6O2 gram C2H6O2 numbers are at the top of the page let's see this is 44.0 again it's a nice relationship simple chemical reaction or the equation is a nice and simple number 62.0 grams of ethylene glycol for every one mole I do all that math and I get 49.3 grams C226O2. That's theoretical. That's what I expected. That was calculated. It's not what I actually got. So I'm going to plug this in. Actual over 49.3 grams times 100% equals 96%. Now I do some algebra here. I'm going to get actual equals 96% over 100% times 49.3 grams. And I get 47.3 grams was what I actually got. Okay, that wraps up chapter six. Students tend to find it pretty easy because as you can see, there's only maybe three equations here now. There's a homework assignment uh, for this, and I think you'll find it to be very, very straightforward. This is uh, used to be one of the hardest things in the book, and now students uh, find it to be pretty straightforward. Get away from the high school Chem 110 idea of like, oh, I do step one, two, three, step one, two, three. Nope, we're using unit analysis. We don't have to memorize any steps. All right, good luck, folks, and um, uh, hope things are going well, and I will see you at the next chapter. Bye now.